Hi Assalamualaikum, today we are talk about chapter 3, Evaluation Techniques. So in this group, we have three persons, Shahzir Natasha Akum, Nurin Fatini and Muhammad Fikri Hafiz. So the meaning of evaluation is test usability and functionality of system. And it mostly happen in laboratory, field or in a collaboration with user. Evaluation should not be thought of as a single phase in the design process. Evaluation should occur throughout the design life cycle with the result of the evaluation feeding back into modification to design. So, evaluation have three main goals. First is assess extent of system functionality. Second is assess effect of interface on user. The third, we, the third one is identify specific problems. So, the first one is Access extent of system functionality. The system functionality is important in that it must accord with the user requirements. So, the design of the system should enable users to perform their intended tasks more easily. The use of system must be matching the user's expectation of the task. The second one is effect of interface on user. This includes considering aspects such as how easy the system is to learn, its usability, the user satisfaction with it, and the user enjoyment and emotional response. So, in the simple terms, is the user experience of the interaction. So, for example, it's like easy to learn, easy to use, the satisfaction of the user when they use the system. So, the lastly is identify specific problems. This may aspect of the design which, when used in the intended context, cause expected results or confusion amongst users related to both the functionality and usability of the design. So, that's all for the main goals of evaluation and I will pass to my next member. Thank you. Explain about cognitive walkthrough. The meaning of cognitive walkthrough is the cognitive walkthrough is a usability evaluation method in which one or more evaluators work through a series of tasks and ask a set of questions from the perspective of the user. The focus of the cognitive walkthrough is on understanding the system's learnability for a new or infrequent user. Next slide. There are four things that need in cognitive walkthrough. First one, a, spec a specification or prototype of system. Second one, a description of the task the user is to perform on the system. Third one, a complete Written list of the actions needed to complete the task with the proposed system. The last one is an indication of who the users are and what kind of experience and knowledge the evaluators can assume about them. The last slide is example of cognitive walkthrough. Okay, for example, we take a how to program the extra beyond remote control. As you can see, this is this is a OK button and this is the TV or standby button. And this indicator light, number pad in here. Okay, option one. First, point the remote at TV. And then press and hold OK button and TV spend, stand or standby button till the indicator light blinds twice. Using the number pad, enter TV brand code from list. Indicator light will blind twice. Test the functions. Okay, to clear the store. Okay, I will uh, explain the step to clear the store code. First, point the remote at TV. And then, press and hold OK. And TV or standby button till indicator blind twice. 
and then enter 977. Thank you. I am going to present heuristic evaluation and Nielsen stand heuristic. Heuristic evaluation is a usability inspection method for computer software that helps to identify usability problems in the user interface design. It specifically involves evaluators examining the interface and judging its compliance with recognized usability principles. These evaluation methods are now widely taught and practiced in the new media sector, where UIs are often designed in a short space of time on a budget that may restrict the amount of money available to provide for other types of interface testing. For the Nielsen stand heuristic is, the first one, visibility of system status. The system should always keep users informed about what is going on, going on through appropriate feedback within reasonable time. Second one is, Match between systems and the real world. The system should speak the user's language with words, phrases, and concepts familiar to the, to the user, rather than system-oriented terms. Follow real-world conventions, making information appear in a natural and logical order. The third one, user control and freedom. Users often choose system functions by mistake and will need a clearly marked emergency exit to leave the unwanted state without having to go through an extended dialog, support, undo and redo. The fourth one, consistency and standards. Users should not have to wonder whether different words, situations or actions mean the same thing. Follow platform conve conventions. For the fifth one, Error prevention. Even better than good error message is a careful design which prevents a problem from occurring in the first place. Either eliminate error prone conditions or check for them and present users with a confirmation option before they commit to the action. Six, recognition, recognition rather than recall. Minimize the user's memory load by making objects, actions, and options visible. The user should not have to remember information from one part of the dialog to another. Instructions for use of the system should be visible or easily retrievable whenever appropriate. 7. Flexibility and efficiency of use. Accelerators, unseen by the novice user, may often speed up the interaction for the expert users such that the system can cater to both inexperienced and experienced users. Allow users to, to tailor frequent actions. 8. Aesthetic and minimalist design. Dialogues should not contain information which is irrelevant or rarely needed. Every extra unit of information in a dialog competes with the relevant units of information and diminish their relative visibility. Number 9. Help users recognize, diagnose, and recover from errors. Error message should be expressed in plain language, no codes. Precisely indicate the problem and constructively suggest a solution. The last one is number 10. Help and documentation. Even though it is better if the system can be used without documentation, it may be necessary to provide help and documentation. Any such information should be easy to search, focus on the user's tasks, list concrete steps to be carried out and not be too large. So that's all for heuristic evaluation and Nielsen stand heuristic. Thank you.